I sense that Mr. Peru is about to surprise us too. I believed in him. I followed him to the best of my ability. I championed his ideas, defended his decisions, and then, without even realizing it, I became lost. Now that I've told you everything, you want to take my place, do you? No. I am Emily. You are wasting your time. Louis knows very well how to tell us apart. Someone had the bang coming from the Duchess's room, and she isn't answering. Louis, you really must learn to conceal your weaknesses better. If you don't want your foes to use them against you. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. It is the natural order of things, Monsieur de Richet. There have always been men who govern other men. That is simply the way it is. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. But where are we? I don't know, but we better not hang around. Be careful, Mother. As if me saying that will make any difference. Knowing Mortimer, I wouldn't be surprised if he rigged his crypt with traps. So you think the door is not enough? Do you want to wager your other hand? You've got a point there. We have to find that weapon. What do you know about the Holy Lance, Louis? The what? The Lance of Longinus the Centurion. Now that you mention it, I did catch Von Volner in the middle of an altercation with Piaggi. What? Von Volner blamed his eminence for having supplied Mortimer with all the lances in the Vatican's possession. If Mortimer has all of them in his possession, it's not going to help us. Seriously? You don't really believe that fable, do you? Every fable is founded on true events. I'm not saying that everything adds up, but imagine if it really did exist. Very well. Now what? Well, now you know what you need to find. Pardon? I have to get to the wharf to prepare our departure. Let's get off this cursed island as quickly as we can. We shall come back when we are ready and armed. But hang on. Louis, let's first get to safety. We shall come back when we have the upper hand. Fear not. You take care of getting the lance. It's imperative. I'll take care of preparing our departure. Hang on. At least tell me everything you know about this lance. But I have never seen it. There's nothing else I can say, Louis. Well, you can always go snooping around Mortimer's study. I remember seeing paintings of Longinus there. Hang on a second. What's the matter? Why did you shoot Emily's sister? Do you really think now is the right time for this? I want to know, Mother. Why did you betray her? Listen, Louis. I don't think you've really understood my interest in the al -Azif. It's not just simple curiosity about some old relic. You tried to kill her. And I had no choice for crying out loud. It must not fall into the hands of the demons or we are all doomed, don't you see? Listen, I don't know exactly what it contains, but I prefer to be one step ahead. If they want it, there must be a reason. And even if I don't know what it is, I want to stop them for safety's sake, no matter what. Nothing will stop you if I understand correctly. Not Enough, even Louis. If you could see the extent of their power as I do, then you would understand what I'm saying. All right, we'll do it your way. One more thing. If they find you in possession of the lance, they won't let you get away with it. Choose only one and hide it under your jacket so you don't get caught with it. Then run and meet me on the wharf. 
And if I get caught? If they catch you in possession of the lands, we're all doomed. Do you understand? Perfectly. Good. And go talk to Piaget. He's the one who probably knows the most about this. The sarcophagus is engraved with the name of Clemens III. Good God! The one whose cross allowed me to enter. That was the Pope from the Middle Ages who inspired the Third Crusade. He gave the Roman people the power to elect their magistrates. This sarcophagus is beautifully made, but ancient. Stone is marked by the passage of time, but it's really well preserved. see that this spear has a, a so-called leaf shape. It is copper rimmed. I can see the tip is engraved with the symbol of the eye of Ra. There are several spearheads. I need to find clues to pick the right one. Piaggi knows something about it for sure. This one has no name. I wonder who it was for. This one has no name. I wonder who it was for. Flavius Aetius. I remember. He was the Roman general who defeated Attila and his hordes in the terrible battle of the Catalonian plains. Flavius Aetius, the one they call the last of the Romans. He was assassinated by his own emperor, who was jealous of all his victories. But how did he end up here? The sarcophagus has been ravaged by time. It's sort of ageless, I guess. It's entirely sculpted. Is this the tomb of a king? <laughs> Judging by all the sculpted symbols of power, this is really ancient. The, the inscriptions are all eroded. I don't know what those marks mean, but 
Maybe a stone or epitaph. See, this lance has a spear shape, it is copper rimmed, and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. The sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. Let's see what we can find here. Uh, uh, it's far too heavy. I'm not going to be able to do it on my own. Golden elixir. Hmm. I'll keep it for later.
Monsieur Johann von Wulner. Pardon me, monsieur, but I have work to do. Sir Jacques Perru. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Duke Manuel Godoy. Huh, that's me. Monsignor, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. The Cardinal's not in his room. I bet he went back to stuffing himself. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. Your Eminence, would you have a moment to spare? Not now, Louis. Please, leave me alone. I beg your pardon? 
I want to be alone. Very well. I, I'm only searching for information about the Lance of Longinus, the soldier. If you, you could... Are not listening to me. You are playing with fire. I heard you speak to Mr. Von Volner about it, and I was wondering if you could tell me something about it. That was a private conversation. How could I have known that he was listening to us? Hmm. I see what you mean. Louis, don't push it. Leave while you still can. Your Eminence, are you all right? Your Eminence, are you with me? Can you turn around, please? What do you want to know about the Holy Lands, Louis? Your Eminence, turn around. This is the weapon used by a Roman centurion on the very day Christ was nailed to the cross. Look at me. Longinus thrust his lance in the right side of Jesus. Please. As you wish. His nose is bleeding. So, you are looking for the Holy Lance of Longinus, are you? Exactly. Frank and direct. I like that. Thank you for not trying to be sly. You are looking for the Lance. You should know, you are not the only one. Lord Mortimer has spent a good part of his life and his fortune trying to find it. Never will he let you have it. But tell me, before going any further, have you spoken to anyone else about this? Yes, my mother knows about it. Of course, Sarah. Who else? No one else. What are you going to use the lance for, exactly? If I told you why I needed this lance, you would never believe it. Trust me, you can tell me anything. It's our only chance to vanquish the demons. Oh, my dear God, Louis. You sound just like Sarah. Do you realize you are following the same path, step by step? Sarah also started by imagining things. She, too, spoke of demons, I am told. She could no longer speak to anyone, and saw a hidden monster in every guest, lurking in the shadows, ready to devour her. You must let us help you, Louis. I thank you for your sincerity. I shall answer you about Longinus. You deserve to be told. His spear-headed lance did indeed pierce the side of the Messiah. His blood gushed out, covering the head of the lance. It was covered in the blood of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Your Eminence. You are welcome. Be careful, Louis. You are on a perilous path. Don't follow Sarah's demons, my boy. Don't delve too deeply into her delusions, or you won't be able to come back. The demons that she is frantically trying to drive away are in her own mind. Take good care of yourself. God keep you.
ce Jacques Perru. Johann von Wunder. It seems like he isn't here. Christ Crucified by Velasquez. Look, someone's left a note there. Reserved for the Duke of Alquidia.
can see that this spear has a, a so-called leaf shape. It is copper rimmed. I can see the tip is engraved with the symbol of the Eye of Ra. see that this lance has the shape of a boar spear. The blade is partially coated in copper, and I can just make out the symbol of the Eye of Ra engraved on the tip. I can see this lance has a spear shape, it is copper rimmed, and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. This lance has a leaf shape. It is copper rimmed. The symbol of the Christian fish is engraved on the tip. sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. Let's see what we can find here. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. lance has a leaf shape. It is copper rimmed. The symbol of the Christian fish is engraved on the tip. I can see this lance has a spear shape. It is copper rimmed and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. I must be sure of my choice. I cannot get it wrong. Am I absolutely sure this is the one to take?
I'm already pressed for time as it is. Mother's waiting for me on the wharf. sticking your nose everywhere again. Wow, what's the matter with him? Excuse me, monsieur, I don't follow you. I haven't come all this way just to fail so close to the goal. Why, what are you talking about? I am talking about what you are doing. This conference is going to boost my career. There is no question of me letting you ruin everything. I just surprised Piaget and Volner talking. You are about to rob Mortimer. Give me what you took from him immediately. Let's keep calm, please. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll have to cut this short, quick. I better get over to the wharf. No point in risking another confrontation.
Am I disturbing you? Ah, Duriche, congratulations on your efforts with Washington. I see that Sir Gregory was right to trust you. Thank you. Oh, while you're here, you wouldn't know who the last guest is, would you? What do you mean? I heard Sir Gregory speaking about it. A certain Al Asif something or other. Who? What? Obviously I... not. It's not important. Forget it. No, no, no. Hang on. It doesn't matter, I'm telling you. We'll find out soon enough. I'm in a hurry right now. I, I'm waiting for someone. Uh, see you later, Louis. Shit. I haven't time either. See you later. Ah, Louis. Perfect timing. As luck would have it. Come, my boy. I would like to have a word with you. Excuse me, monsieur. Lord Mortimer is asking for you. No need to be afraid. Come closer, please. It's time we had a little chat. What's... what's wrong, my lord? Uh, tell me, what's with all the bodyguards? Louis, it's time you found out the truth. I've been observing you since you arrived. I see you running all over the grounds in the search of Sarah. I would like to prevent her from leading you even further down the wrong road. You see, Sarah and I have known each other for a very long time, Louis. I am aware of her theory. About me? About Gregory? About the demons? She's right. Look at me. I have inhabited this body since 1191. For the last 602 years, I have been this dear William Mortimer. Continue. Louis, it's time you opened your eyes. Come, you'll soon see. After you. I hope I've answered all your questions, Louis. Come. I have something to show you. There... there is one question that remains to be answered. Why me? Why tell me all of this? Oh. Haven't you guessed yet? I mean, it's obvious you want me on your side. That doesn't explain why you're telling me all these truths. Louis, this conference is indeed of capital importance to me. And yes, I want you on my side. But that's not the main reason that compels me to confide in you. What is it then? Look, we are of the gods, Louis. Always have been. You, as much as me, you are one of us, Louis. You too are a demon. Are you serious? You know it. Deep down inside, you know I am telling you the truth. Where do you think that natural charismatic presence comes from? Your talent must already have manifested itself somehow. Have you ever had any visions? No. Stop it, it's absurd. Have you never found yourself suddenly inside someone else's body, without knowing why? No. Whilst asleep, maybe? That's how it often happens the first time. Your spirit wanders unconsciously. My mother can't have lied to me about that. It's true. Your real mother would never have lied I, to you. I... what do you mean? Louis. 
I would rather you found this out from her own lips, but it's important that you know. Sarah is not your mother. I, what? I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Louis. But you must know the truth before you commit an irreparable act. No, I... No. It, no, it's not possible. You are my son. Not too shaken up. You've experienced many significant events since your arrival. You can say that again. For now, I think you ought to find Sarah, my son. You want to talk things over with her. So she's been lying to me all along? Let her justify herself. What's done is done. Sarah must explain herself. You must clear the air. We'll have all the time we need to talk afterwards. But all in good time. B before you join her, I'd like to give you something. As a demon, I would like to introduce you to your first talent. What do you mean? Open your mind, my son. Relax. You hold immense power. It's already there, inside you. Empty your mind of all thoughts. Just let me show you the way. I should relax. Open your mind. Hear my voice. Feel the vibrations and listen to what has been happening to you, deep inside, but which you have been concealing. Trust yourself. It's all already in there. I... I can hear something. Now breathe. It's a sound very, very faint. That's right. Concentrate on it. My voice is growing fainter, but I am here. I... whispers, words, mixed voices. Mm. Focus on one of them. Don't be afraid. I... I sense a stream. Some words are clear, but not all of them. Let them enter into your mind. I hear them. Now, now I can hear a clear voice. Well done, Louis. Congratulations. What was it? You are now able to read people's minds. I... what? You heard me. From now on, whenever a human speaks to you, you will be able to read their current thoughts. So, if you need to know something in particular from someone, all you have to do is make them think about it. But it, it'd be a violation of their most intimate thoughts, wouldn't it? To begin with, there's nothing obliging you to do it. You already had the ability without even knowing it. I just gave you the option of putting it into practice, if you want. Moreover, it would be wrong to evoke morality here. Every species is different, Louis, and this is the way we are made. That's all there is to it. You are free to use this talent or not. And what's more, it will be up to you to decide what to do with the thoughts you read. That is where the values of right and wrong do come into play. There are also a few rules you need to know that govern this talent when used between ourselves. You can read the thoughts of demons as well as of humans. But be careful. A demon more experienced than yourselves will know that you are spying and will often react quite violently. It's considered bad form to play around the psyche of another demon. It's a question of courtesy. But let's be clear. What is most considered bad form is getting caught. So I would advise against trying to read the thoughts of Gregory, for example. Home? Yes, the old grump is touchy and rather a stickler about the conventions. On that note, go and see Sarah, Louis. Otherwise, she might leave without you. We'll continue this discussion later if you want. Just join me in my study when you've finished. what Mortimer is thinking about. He is thinking he might not have been clear enough with you. 
When I told you not to try to read into Gregory or her experienced demons, it also applied to me, of course. You... you can hear me think? Of course I can. I can sense you. For the moment, your mind shines like a thousand lights because you haven't yet mastered the art of concealment from the psyches of others. So, I give you a weapon, and the first thing you do is try to shoot me with it? If my intentions were evil, you would already be at my mercy. So be very careful on whom you use the talent. All right. Please excuse me. And I... don't ever apologize, my son. You are far above that from now on. Now go. One more thing. If you want to know the truth about your birth, ask her about Paris, 1763, at 12 Rue des Martyrs. That's where she disemboweled your mother to steal you from me. It's not that I regret all these discussions, but I must hurry to the wharf. You shot her in cold blood. What is at stake here far outweighs our personal interests. I, our I should- Our personal interests? I'm talking about my sister's life. She was my other half. Calm down, Emily, calm Louis, down. don't come near me. I warned you what would happen if I found her. I was so hoping it wouldn't end like this. I'm fed up with all these deaths. Emily, calm down. You're not like them. You're not a murderer. Is that so? And what do you think we were doing for the Order then? And for the Crown of England? Why do you think the Order contacted me? Silent, methodical. No one ever suspected us. We always covered for each other. Duchess, I am sorry for what happened. I didn't have any choice. Are ah, you? Shut your mouth. You had the choice, all right. You use people according to your own desires, without any scruples. Excuse me, Duchess, but we're in the same line of business. Shut it! And as for Emma, she knew only too well. No, Emily. Look at me, Emily. What did you say? No, I'm not like her, and never will be. You're not like her! Neither you nor Emma are like Sarah. Ever since you got here, you've always tried to help me. I trust you, Emily, and Emma would never have betrayed me either. No, she... she wasn't like that. She was loyal. But why did Sarah betray Emma? Why? I... Your sister was supposed to hide something, and no one was supposed to have been able to find it. And? She would never have talked, even under torture. So why get rid of her? Unfortunately, Emily, the creatures who live here employ methods that no one can resist. I was going to get her out of there for God's sake. So what are you talking about? Emily Mortimer's a demon, in the literal sense of the word. What are you... Lord Mortimer has been around since the Third Crusade. He fiddles with his family records so he can keep maintaining his identity. I know it sounds crazy, but I swear on everything I hold dear, that's the truth. What? But when did... Louis, I... 
Do you realize what you are asking me to believe? I know, but it's the truth, Emily. How do you expect me to accept this? We are in the Golden Order precisely to fight against such beliefs. Do you remember those deeds we found behind the chimney? They weren't fake. There's a reason why they're all signed by his same hand. Demons. In his study, he keeps the Mortimer family tree. They produced only boys, just one per generation since the Third Crusade, and they are all called William. He justifies his own existence, Emily. Look, I'm going to believe you, but if you're taking me for a ride... Unfortunately for us, it'd be impossible to even make up a story like that. All right, I believe you. Thank him. You owe him your life. I have always been very lucky to have him as my son. I really thought my next breath would be my last. Well, anything's possible. This is no time to be joking. Just help me climb aboard this boat, and let's get off of this cursed island. No, I'm not going anywhere, and neither are you, until you've told me everything. For crying out loud, what are you talking about? Paris, 1763, number 12 on Rue des Martyrs. No, I beg you, please trust me. He's manipulating you. We must leave. Paris. Can't you see he wants you? And he'll do anything to turn you against me? Number 12 on Rue des Martyrs. He had to pay for what he did to me. I panicked. There she was with the baby dew. I thought it was the right time to touch it, but To when... touch it? By disemboweling her and stealing me from her? The girl was already condemned to die. He never leaves any witnesses behind. She meant nothing to him. And I absolutely had to find a way of stopping him. You snatched a newborn baby from its mother's womb with the sole goal of seeking revenge. From the second I took you in, I couldn't bear to be apart from you. I looked after you, fed you, raised you, like a mother. I know, you always took care of me. I devoted my whole life to teaching you to distinguish between right and wrong, so you would have the choice. You are not like him. But, but you never told me. I wanted to. I very nearly told you everything at least a dozen times. You didn't, though, did you? Why? I, I, I don't know, Louis. You never would have dared to tell me everything. Yes, I would have told you everything, I swear. But it wasn't easy. I wanted to choose the right time. Louis, yes. I made mistakes in the past, but now I'm ready to- Do you consider me a mistake? No, not you. You are what I am most proud of in my whole life. You are good. You fight to do right. You are not like him. Still, he is my father. Why did you steal me? You don't want to know, believe me. For once in your life, be honest. Why all this mess? Why do you have it in for him so much? Why? Because I'm his daughter. I know what he's doing. I see he has his eye on you. He's hovering around you, tempting you. He did it to me before you. And if you don't live up to his expectations, he will cast you away. Is that what happened to you? I wasn't good enough for him. So he rejected me. What do you mean? He tried to initiate me, but... It would seem I am unable to develop his talent. I can't withdraw my mind from my body. I get it. The reason why you abducted me is because he didn't love you, isn't it? He doesn't love anyone, Louis. Don't be taken in. You are my mother. Whatever you've done, I can't take that away from you. It doesn't excuse everything, but in time we will find a way of putting it all behind us. Oh, thank you, Louis. Thank you. I will never lie to you again. Come on, let's go. No, Mother. I'm not going back with you. I can't. What do you mean? Louis, you can't stay here. He Don't will... Don't worry about me. I have to stay. I still have a lot to learn. But you go. Louis! I'll see you in Paris. Don't worry. Here. This is yours. Forget Louis. You've got the lance. You can beat him. If you hit him with it, he won't be able to escape from his mortal envelope, and he will die with it.
rational and open. I spent my whole life swimming in lies. Emily, what a waste. I feel like I know nothing. That I have to learn everything all over again. I'm a demon. I age more slowly. I can mentally manipulate people. I don't even know if it's a good thing or a curse. No. No, this is an advantage. I could get used to this pretty quickly, I think. Damn it. What a mess. Come on. Man up, Louie. I'm still the same old me. Demon or not, I'm still in charge of my actions. And this father, I know nothing about. Yes, I've still got a lot to learn. It's enough to drive you crazy. Everything I believed in, nothing holds true anymore. Pull yourself together, man. I need to find some answers. There's no way of being alone for a minute. Sir Gregory? Good day, Louis. I think it would be good to talk. How are you feeling? I don't know. I understand. I heard that William spoke to you at last about our nature and our family. It's a good thing, but you must be a bit shaken up. That's the least you can say. I bid you welcome among us, Louis. Knowing William, he probably didn't go into any detail about our family, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. How many of us are there in the family? We are eight brothers and sisters. What do you mean by brothers and sisters if we can change bodies? You reason with logic. Uh, we have retained the human habit. When we first come into this world, we retain a certain attachment to our first envelope. If we are born as a man, we are brothers. If we are born as a woman, we are sisters. But I must admit, it has absolutely no real importance. They're just bodies. Well, tell me then. Are there any other families like ours? There are officially seven, but we're the oldest and therefore the most powerful. Is there a head of the family? You'll see. You'll meet them all, of course. When you are ready, they created us and set out the rules, especially our father. As for our mother, she retired from the political stage. We don't see her much anymore. I think that all these questions simply bore her. What's Lord Mortimer's problem? I think he allows himself to be devoured by a need for recognition. Has he always been like that? More or less, but thinking about it, I believe that the birth of our latest sibling greatly accentuated his discomfort. Do you think he's jealous? I didn't realize you were so good at behavioral analysis. Indeed, William certainly is prone to jealousy. Finding one's place, notably in the eyes of our father, is not easy, and we each do what we can to succeed. But I can't justify this perpetual rebellion against our rules. How long has our family been in existence. We have been here since the very beginning. What do you mean, exactly? Are you trying to get information from me? Uh, I, no, not at all. I, I was just wondering why that particular question seemed to disturb you. Uh, let us not insist, then. You yourself weren't very convinced by the question, it seems. I see. There is still much to learn. Yes, it's true. You've got some catching up to do, my boy. One thing you must understand regarding any disagreements that might arise between William and myself is his position with regard to mankind. What do you mean? Well, for centuries we've been trying to help and therefore preserve humanity. Monarchies are simple and practical. They enable us to inspire humanity efficiently and I can't understand why William wants to replace them with 
democracy. But if your intention is not to dominate the human race, why not let them be master of their own destinies? I perfectly understand this type of reaction from you. Less from William. The main thing you're lacking is time. Man is transient, and one of his particularities is that he does not learn from the errors of his peers. He uses up an incredible amount of energy building and destroying whatever he himself has put into place. If we weren't here to help them, guide them, I sincerely believe that humanity would have become extinct by now. On the other hand, we are eternal, Louis. When we plan ahead, we do it for the long term. Hmm. Well, indeed, from that point of view, it is better to... to guide them. It's rare for a novice demon to manage to stop thinking like a man so quickly. It has taken centuries for our family to establish relative peace between demons. Thanks to this policy, we have been able to decide everything by confining the other families to subordinate roles. And now William is obsessed with disrupting everything. Peace between demons? What do you mean? I'm not talking about conflicts within our family. If that was all there was, everything would be fine. But several other families, younger but nonetheless powerful, are trying to upset the balance. At present, we dominate most of the major countries around the globe. But some families are pushing, via less influential countries, to gain ground. Do you understand? As best I can, yes. When the time comes, you must take up a position on the political chessboard. I only hope your father doesn't take you down with him. Are you offering me an alliance? Louis, I do not believe that just because your father is mistaken, all is lost for you. You owe William nothing, so there's nothing obliging you to support him. I want you to make an informed choice. Now go and see your father, see what he has to say, and then think it over very carefully. That's exactly what I intended to do. Thank you, Uncle. Don't mention it. If I've been able to help you in any way, go now.
Louis, I was sure you would stay. I'm proud of you. You've made the right choice. It took great maturity to forgive your sister as you did. She brought me up. I, I realized I owed her a lot. We all make mistakes, as Sarah well knows. Why didn't you tell me the truth about her? I thought that might be too many truths to absorb at one time. I intended to tell you afterwards. You were in a hurry, so I made a decision. You've been able to understand and choose for yourself. How do you feel? <sighs> Hard to say. Confused about everything? I have to admit, it's, it's been a lot to take in in such a short amount of time. What could be more normal? It may have been a bit brutal, but you've just grown up in a very short space of time. From now on, you can influence your own future. I will guide you. We've all the time we need. You're not the first to make me that offer. What do you mean by that? Your brother, Sir Gregory. Gregory. Why am I not even surprised? What did he say? I've been given to understand that you have a difficult relationship with your father. Isn't that right? Let's just say we don't see things the same way. I ended up finding out that there's a world outside the rules he has imposed on us. It seems you find yourself in the same position that you've placed men. You were told what to do, what to think, and you found it unbearable. Imagine if humanity finds out you secretly direct them. How do you think they'd react? Hmm. Your analogy is not without substance. But that's where it ends. Man's main flaw is his willingness to forget and to make the same errors time and again. He can't help it. He is mortal. I don't impose anything on anyone. I'm just following my own path. But where does it lead? Hmm. I, I suppose I should explain. For centuries now, demons have emerged in and around great leaders all over the world. But like true tyrants, they have governed with an iron fist in a studded glove. That's the impression I get. But you see, people's discontent is increasing, and they are too high up to hear it. They take themselves for gods. Sooner or later, the people will turn against us, just as they have in the past. Each time it's happened, many of us have died. We must master the humans, yes, but gently. And the best way of doing that is by allowing them a free choice, Louis. You really are trying to liberate men. Of course, not entirely, no. It is easier to keep control over people who slumber than people who are oppressed. A man with nothing to lose is a dangerous man. Whereas, if you give him a roof, food, and entertainment, he will do whatever you want. The best way of getting them to achieve something is to make them think it was their idea. For that, they have to feel as if they are free. Hang on, what do you mean? Look at the United States. From the start, I introduced an idea that will change everything. The idea that everything is possible. Everyone can become someone. Is there anything more beautiful? You mean it's not true? Man can move mountains when he believes it is in his own interest. And what nobler cause is there than his own freedom? Do you have any more examples? Of course. Talk to me about slavery. Well, take the slave trade, for example. It's an archaic practice that simply has to stop. Today, black slaves of America work for free and in unbearable conditions. Tomorrow, if you free the blacks and offer them work along with a salary, they will bless you for it. Then. They will be integrated into the system. They will be taxable. Once they are free, they will have to work for a roof, pay taxes, and feed their families. Maybe we could take away the civil rights of prisoners, for example. In this way, we'll keep control of all those who respect the system and benefit from the others as workforce. Tell me what you think about progress. Progress is essential, Louis. It's the future. What else? Progress, 
must liberate humanity from burdensome chores. Progress must replace man, whatever his presence is not obligatory. It creates both the desire and the need. It will liberate women, as soon as the machines are able to do all the chores in the home automatically. It will bring men together by bringing a faster means of locomotion. Look at the cultural revolution that printing brought about. And what would you propose for women? They must be given the right to work and to vote. Look, at the moment they don't work. They take care of raising children. What a mistake. We have to get them out of the house. Make them work. In this way, not only will they become consumers, but they will also delegate the job of education to the system. We could guide humanity from a young age, Louis, don't you see? Today we are wasting too much time. But the most important of all has already been laid. The foundation stone. Freedom of speech. The first amendment of the Constitution. There must be opponents to every project. So, above all, don't develop a one-track approach. Otherwise, man won't have enough room for expression to feel free. If man sees his chains, he will only want to break them. If we give men the feeling that they are free, I am convinced that they will exceed their limits. And it is only from that condition that humanity shall rise up. But do you want to dominate or raise humanity higher? I want it to advance. I want it to progress. Man is our vessel. If he progresses, then so do we. Wouldn't you like to know what we really are? Who do you mean? Demons? Yes, us. Our species. I've been searching for centuries, trying to find a way to explain the reason of our existence. But humanity has not yet evolved enough to make any progress on the subject. I am convinced that the sciences will bring that knowledge someday. So, that's your objective, is it? To understand who we are? I understand your goal, but the change you propose is not really a significant one. It is merely more smoke and mirrors. You must understand that we directly depend on men. Consequently, we have to do our utmost to help them progress and to prevent them from killing each other. And you think that's been a success? Humanity? It's almost always at war. And it's been this way forever. Look, I'm not saying that the task is easy. We've all had failures. And at times, we have even suffered from conflicts on our own side. I'm doing my best to improve the situation. Our family clings to its privileges and to the past. And that's how they are putting us in danger. The time has come for change. Now that you know your true nature, there are still a few things I need to teach you. What do you mean exactly? A new skill. And not the least, Louis. It's about taking control of a person. Okay, let's not waste any more time. <laughs> I deduce that you're impatient to master what's in store for you. That is good. I thought I'd mix business with pleasure for this first time. What do you mean by that? The conference will come to a close shortly, as you know. Not that I'm fed up with archaic diplomacy, but it's time to ensure the success of this project. To make this happen, I would like Piaget to inform the Pope he has changed signs. You... you're going to use your powers to alter the votes? The real game is about to begin, Louis. Up till now, the guests have been sizing each other up. From now on, it's time for Gregory and myself to play. As well as you yourself. Now, here is my plan. I would like you to join his eminence in his room. Just play along. We'll see when the time comes. Very well. And then? You're going to have to trust me. What we're going to do is painless for the human you are going to invade. Invade? Yes. You're going to enter his mind and take control. You're going to influence his actions and his psyche. Make him speak, then concentrate. You must focus on him in order to feel his thoughts. Then, while speaking, you must link with him. Once you're done, you will naturally find your way to the source and enter into his thoughts. But what if I fail? Trust in your instincts. You just have to let yourself go. 
You have the skill. Let your nature come to the fore. You'll see. If you fail, you'll be in for some light banter with his eminence. That's all. There's nothing to be afraid of. Very well. Perfect. Go now. The Cardinal is in his room. You will have to write a letter to the Pope, as if Piaggi had written it himself. In this letter, tell the Pope that whatever happens during the conference, he must follow my propositions. But be careful. In order to protect himself from counterfeiters, the Pope had Piaggi's hand tattooed with a symbol to be sure of his identity. You'll see when you're inside him. You'll understand. Once it's written up, just bring it back to me, and I'll send it off immediately. All right. I'll take care of it. Sir Johann von Wulner. Monsignor, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Ah, well, Louis, what brings you back to my chambers? May I sit down? Of course, Louis. Don't you feel good? Yes, but if I'm gonna pass inside you, I'd better sit myself down first. It's nothing, don't worry about it. Well, what can I do for you? Right. Now I need to concentrate. I wanted to speak to you, Your Eminence. I wanted to thank you for your help. I mean, for your time talking to me about the Holy Lance. Oh, and did you find it? It's the crusade of a lifetime for some people. You are searching for another Holy Grail. You're nearly there. Link into his thoughts. Does it annoy you at all? But what on earth is he trying to get at? Why do you ask, Louis? I don't follow. For the glory, Your Eminence. I can feel it coming. It's working. What? Insolence? Why? Really? I am a man of the church, Louis. May God keep me from such ambition. Right. Let me in, Your Eminence. Why? <gasps> uh, uh, I've done it. I've done it, damn it. He was right. This is just crazy. I can't believe it. Look at yourself, Louis. You better not get caught. Whoa. I still need to get used to this body. So, let's see about what Mortimer asked me. Right. Well, it's time I got started. Let's see what I can find here to help me write that letter. I have no means to validate my forgery, so I better take my time with it and not make any mistakes. There are two letters from the Pope on the desk. I should be able to get a clue or two by checking how well they correspond to each other. And here are three stamps. All are different.
one of the letters, the Pope asked Piaggi to change and to stop using his personal stamp. He asked him to use the one with the Pope's motto on it. And I remember that. Flore in Domo Domini. Giustizia, misericordia e umiltà. Boy, I gotta brush up my foreign languages. On it is written, Flore in Domo Domini. Right. Well, let's start writing. Lord Mortimer asked me to discredit Sir Gregory and to announce Piaggi's final vote in his favor. As an introduction, Your Holiness, thank you for your trust. It turns out, now that I'm here, that I find Lord Mortimer's projects grant us many more advantages in comparison to what Sir Gregory had suggested. We are talking about the future of the Holy See. Hmm. There. That should be enough to justify the change of vote. There's a kind of code composed of six letters that they always write under the dates of their correspondence. According to Mortimer, it's got something to do with Piaggi's tattoo. I guess I'll have to write one for today's date. Now, ideally, it'd be better to do it without it, but I'm going to need to be extremely clever here. Today the date is 2401-1793. In the letters from the Pope, there are six letters just below the date, two just below the month, four others below the year. Piaggi's tattoo. It must be used to establish a connection between the letter of the concentric circle and the number shown in the middle. Some figures are the same in both codes, yet they correspond to different letters. The day is not translated. That must be the key to the code. Today the date is 2401-1793. In the letters from the Pope, there are six letters just below the date, two just below the month, four others below the year. Piaggi's tattoo. It must be used to establish a connection between the letter of the concentric circle and the number shown in the middle. Some figures are the same in both codes, yet they correspond to different letters. The day is not translated. That must be the key to the code. Today the date is 2401-1793.
in the letters from the Pope, there are six letters just below the date, two just below the month, four others below the year. Piaget's tattoo, it must be used to establish a connection between the letter of the concentric circle and the number shown in the middle. Some figures are the same in both codes, yet they correspond to different letters. The day is not translated. That must be the key to the code. Today the date is 2401-1793. 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 Today is the 2401-1793. Your eminence, all ready to send... What's he doing here? Damn it. That's all I need. Don't worry, he can't hear us. What do you mean, he can't hear us? What's going on here, Piaggi? The old goat is going to drop us. It's a lousy turncoat. Oh, he'd better not tell me he just fell asleep. Just calm down, calm down. Louis came to see me because he claimed he was hearing voices. We've just finished an exorcism session. An exorcism? Are you having me on? I can't see any exorcism instruments. That's because I've just put them away. I don't know what you're up to, Piaggi. But I do know you're trying to pull one over on me. I was about to fetch someone to take care of him. Would you care to go? There he is. And there he stays. <laughs> the perfect opportunity. What do you mean? It's been a while now that I've been hoping for a chance to get rid of him. Uh, uh, no, listen, my son. This is all getting out of hand. Hogwash! I don't trust him in the slightest. Why not? Can you keep a secret? Of course, my son. Would you like to tell me under the confidentiality of confession? Ah, don't talk rubbish. I don't trust the little runt because he is Mortimer's son. Would you believe it? How does he know? Dear God, how is that possible? I am flabbergasted. We've wasted enough time. What if he wakes up? If you don't want to get your hands dirty, just turn away and leave everything to me. This is not a decision to be taken lightly. You're defending him now. What are you talking about? Of course not. He's made you change sides, hasn't he? The slime bag. He works for Mortimer. Uh, good thing I already tried to warn Gregory. You find Louis unconscious and conclude that I'm his accomplice? It's not so much finding him here as you being against me getting rid of him. 
That's not what you thought the day before yesterday, after he eavesdropped on our conversation. Listen carefully, Piaggi. If you say anything, you'll be the one they find dead in your bed. Huh? Now, just turn around and let me handle this. Don't touch him! Out of my room! I don't know what the two of you are up to, but I'll find out sooner or later. Right. Time for me to get back into my body. Right. Don't just stand there, Louis. Mortimer's waiting for you in the Red Salon. Song of Roland. Roland feeleth his death is near, his brain is oozing by either ear. With his brain oozing, it's already remarkable that he can feel anything. So, Louis, what was your first time like? Bewildering, isn't it? Here's your letter. I have to admit, the experience was utterly amazing. Come, tell me more. Well, honestly, I... My stomach was just turning in circles. <laughs> that reminds me of my first time. Ooh. But you did it. Gregory, what can I do for you? I've just come to make sure dear Louis has all the information he needs. Needs for what? You are free to make your own choices, William. I would like the same for him, too. There's nothing I want more, Gregory. Your schemes will lead to your demise, brother. Don't involve Louis. He has nothing to do with all this. 
The end of the conference approaches, and this masquerade will soon be torn asunder. Don't drag him down with you in your disgrace. Oh, ye of little faith. On the contrary, brother, Louis has just entered the family. Give him a chance to find his place. His place? What place is that? At the end of a leash, like all the others. Don't listen to him. He's angry with our father. And with good reason. He governs us in the same way he governs humanity. Through fear and submission. Same old tune. When will you understand that it's necessary to impose order for things to move forward properly? You are under his thumb and proud of it. Open your eyes for crying out loud. His whole system has become outdated and he's too old to see it. He will lead us to our demise. Here he goes with another of his grand speeches. William has always been fond of staging big scenes. It's his theatrical side. Does he have an inferiority complex? I've told him time and time again, Louis. He always has to take it one step too far. How dare you? You are blind, brother. Even if the evidence bit you on the nose, you still wouldn't see it. I feel sorry for you. Tea is drunk hot or not at all, William. When will you learn? It's too bitter. You shouldn't let it brew so long. I knew you'd be coming along. You are so predictable. Methodical, I would say. Things must be accomplished in the right order if we want the world to keep turning as it does. You came here to warn me, sir. No, to advise you. Advise me against my father? Why? I think you are capable of deciding you for- You haven't answered my question. Why warn me against my father? What are you afraid he will do to me? Well, I wouldn't want him to lead you into, I don't know what absurd adventure in you which- You act as though I were in danger. I agree with Louis, Gregory. You're trying to pass me off as a villain about to devour him. That's not funny, William. I won't let him follow you. You see, Louis, Gregory came here to make you change your mind. It's time for things to change. I acknowledge Father has done many good things for humanity, but his time is over, and now he must pass on the torch. That's enough. There, Louis. That's the pathetic example your father has to offer. I really am sorry about what happened to you. You don't know our family yet. We can't have given you a very good impression, but bear in mind that we are all against William's project. On the contrary. If he insists on going through with it, we will have no other choice than to intervene by force. Consequently, my dear Louis, you're going to have to choose sides. I would much rather have met you in different circumstances. There you are, Louis. See what happens when you don't follow their orders to the letter. Louis, I'm afraid the time to decide is now. <coughs> if you follow William, he will drag you down with him. If, on the other hand, you support me, I can assure you that nothing will happen to you. You won't be blamed for your father's errors. Ah, the masks are off. I offer you liberty. He obliges you to choose, and shamelessly asks you to betray your own father. That is their true face. Right. Before I answer, well, I better think it over very carefully. Do I intend to embrace my demon nature and take my place on the chessboard? Do I stay out of it and do my utmost to stop them? Or do I renounce my nature and do all I can to stay human? I was born a man. I, I grew up finding out that I'm a demon makes no difference. I refuse to let them manipulate humanity the way they do. They're gonna ask me to choose between them. I'll just have to go with the lesser evil of the two. But they better not count on me to keep my word. I'll bring them all down. So? <coughs> what do you choose, Louis? Father, 
I'm sorry, but if I'm going to follow my instincts, I can't in good conscience follow you. Well, but I hope you won't take it personally, but I prefer to support Sir Gregory. Very well. You have made your choice. It's time we finished what we started, brother. The final vote of the conference over the acquisition of Louisiana will take place in a few hours. I propose you gather your troops and prepare to close the debate. That's precisely what I was going to suggest. Well, my friends, here we all are. <coughs> Isn't the Duchess meant to be with us? No, she's resting in her room. Don't worry, the confidence can resume. Now, we all know the tensions have been running high, but now is not the moment to give in. I really don't understand why Lord Mortimer insists. Yes, indeed. It will only take one of you opposing his project to win the conference. But I would rather have us united until the end. Meanwhile, let us remain on our guard against any last-minute surprises. I know my brother well. He never prepares for war if he has no chance of winning. 